Cravings. Have I got rid of my cravings? Well, let's talk about it. Stay tuned. Several years ago when I did the keto diet, I solidly thought I was going without sugar for at least two years before I did a cheat meal. But what I didn't know was that all the fake keto stuff also had sugar on it, in it, or over it, whatever. And so my cravings never completely went away. And sugar is addictive enough that they usually don't completely go away. And one of the things that you encounter when you go without something, I don't care what it is, when you go without something for 30 days, you figure out where those cravings come from. And here's the good news. Right? If you can just last 30 days without sugar, without processed sugar, things are going to taste different. My wife was talking to me this morning how she's been craving apples and she's cut down her sugar content or con she's cut down on her consumption of processed sugar quite a bit. Um, and she was craving apples for some reason. And I said, yeah, when you, when you go without something, your cravings will change. They won't be as strong, but, you know, so I thought this would be a good topic for the video. Now, what I used to do in the truck is I would have those uh, vitamin gummies, which I wouldn't have those now, but they helped with the sweet cravings. Um... yogurt, blueberries, stuff like that would help. Um, I would eat that Oikos uh, keto friendly yogurt, but for the most part that had different kinds of sugars. So you, know, you gotta be careful with the erythritol and allulose and all that stuff. Here's the deal, your, your, your taste buds are gonna change. It's kind of like if you drink nothing but diet soda, when you drink a real soda, man, it will taste too sweet. Well, that's kind of what happens with regular sugar stuff, right? If, you know, what used to be an everyday treat turns into something so decadent that it just doesn't taste good. Trust me on this. It, it's happened to me. It's happened to others. And I'll give you an example. So... Anytime that we've gone out to eat, you know, I'll order unsweet tea and every now and then the waiter, waiter or waitress will get it wrong and I accidentally get sweet tea and I'll take a sip and I'll be like, Wah. you know, it's like someone just punched me in the face. Um, yesterday I went and had coffee with my oldest daughter and she ordered this blueberry froca mocha, whatever, you know, like like this frou-frou drink and I ordered just a straight coffee latte you know basically milk and coffee that's all it is right and when I got mine it didn't taste right something was off and so I tried hers to make sure we didn't get cross and, and hers just it began blueberry chemical the chemical they use for the blueberry flavor would just oh it was, it was just it just punched me in the face and of course the sugar also punched me in the face because i've gone without those kind of things for so long and that chemical taste 
you know, I ended up, well, going back. So I ended up taking the coffee back and saying, you know what, you just need to redo this with different milk because obviously your milk spoiled or whatever. But I still never got that chemical taste out of my mouth up until late last night. When you go to only natural foods for a long time, once something processed does hit the body, your body's gonna let you know. It's, it's gonna tell you what you should have known before. But see, we, you develop a tolerance of it, just like an alcoholic develops tolerance. Like, you know, when you're, when you're a teenager, you know, you drink first beer, man, you're trashed, right? But as you become an adult, it takes like maybe 12 six packs, you know, or something like that. And, you know, next thing you know, you gotta have a Bacardi 151 plus three six packs of beer just to even get the buzz that you might have gotten when you were 22 years old. You develop a tolerance to these chemicals that they're putting in the food. And the body processes it the same way. Just like uh, as alcohol, you know, it, it, everything goes through the liver and, and it's, 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 anyways, the chemicals, I'm going off track here. So basically what I'm saying is as you evolve into this all natural it's got to be the cleaner keto or you know the lion or carnivore diet with with not a whole lot of processed meats and stuff like that if you avoid the dextrose and the dextrin and the maltodextrin and all the 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 48 different names that they have for sugars if you avoid all that then you're going to notice a difference if when you actually do fall off the wagon or you do try something different or you do something that's you know maybe some roast beef that was in a package or something like that you're, you're gonna you're it's, it's just gonna it's not gonna taste right listen to that your cravings will change and and i've been eating sugar so long that i don't think the sugar cravings will ever completely go away and that's where these these fake keto products get you these fake diet products it's like oh it's just like the real thing like like you know, the like the diet Dr Pepper. Now they call them Dr Pepper Zero or Coke Zero, and the body still thinks you're doing the same thing. It's just not tasting right. And to me, so the texture of everything changes, the taste of everything changes, and pretty soon you won't crave those things anymore. They'll be gross to you, and that that's a good place to be in because if you can look at a candy bar if you can look at a donut and go ew gross man that's that's so liberating i can't tell you how liberating that is don't take my word for it there are, there are plenty of people that will tell you the same story we're at day 38 just two more days after this of the 40 videos in a row challenge that i've that I've signed up for and we're holding steady at 280 so we, we've, we've kind of I did not gain the usual two pounds that I get after having a Chinese buffet like I thought I would so that's good news and I feel pretty good I fasted for oh how long did I fast for I think I took a picture of it no nope, maybe I didn't 22 hours I fasted for 22 hours I basically stopped eating at uh, 12.30 yesterday, and then ate, didn't eat again until this morning. I cooked about a half a pound of hamburger and with some Swiss cheese and eggs. It was, it was great. So, um, and I feel pretty good. I got a little bit of brisket I can nibble on, you know, while my wife's in there cooking dinner. She's cooking chicken livers, which should be pretty good. But other than that, day 38, we're at 280. I appreciate every single one that's watched this video. I've got some special things planned for, for 40, day 40. So strength for today over tomorrow. Love yourself. Hey.